Hello everyone, it's Luck here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, playing some Standard, which is not my format of choice, but it is the format of the Nationals, which in Australia are just a few weeks away, and I am busy preparing because I'm very excited to be playing in that tournament. The deck that I'm preparing is a super cool green-white mid-range deck, it plays a lot of the coolest cards in the format, and its plan is pretty simple, so I'm going to keep this deck deck pretty short so we can jump right into a competitive league, so we can see some of the awesome magic that this deck generates. Alright, so looking at the plan, we've got 10 mana accelerants. The idea is we play these out in the first couple of turns, and then hopefully our awesome 4, 5, and 6 mana spells will then very quickly take over the game from as early as turn 3. Supporting that plan, we have a bunch of versatile cards that help make us more consistent and help us to interact with any deck in the format. Those cards are Jade Light Ranger, Walking Ballista, Brontodon, which is split between the mid and the sideboard, Cast Out is super versatile removal, and then, of course, we have Blossoming Defense, one of my favorite spells in green, in standard. I just love the mana efficiency of it. Another thing I like about this deck is the really cool sideboard. It's jam-packed full of removal, which means that we can often filter into a sort of, like, control role. We can often be the beatdown. We can just fulfill many roles, and we get to play a ton of awesome cards while doing it. Beyond the removal in the sideboard, we've got some protection against sweepers with heroic interventions and Nissa Vital Force to help us grind and recover. We've got some super parts for counter magic and, of course, some more naturalize effects, including naturalize itself. And that just about wraps up this deck tech. Super sweet deck. I hope you'll join me for round number one of our competitive league. Alrighty, welcome to round number one of our competitive league, and to open things off we have a pretty mediocre hand because it's lacking an early play in one of our mana accelerants. Uh, it is however a keep because it does do a few different things, and Jade Light Ranger really helps any hand to just get there. Looks like the opponent's on mono red or maybe red black, they're kicking off with the Bowmet Courier in any case. This is a matchup that I quite like, although pre-board, especially without any accelerants, it is a little tricky. Alright, so the opponent's got a tap land on turn 2, which is pretty good for us. Hopefully means the pressure won't be too intense, they have shown themselves to be on a red-black deck. And Courier is just going to get in for one more damage before we get the turn back. So we now have the choice between Jade Light Ranger and Thrashing Brontodon. Brontodon, of course, is the better blocker. Overall, a more solid 3-drop in the matchup, I'd say, although Jade Light Ranger is perfectly serviceable too. In this spot, without any uh, real pressure beyond this courier. I'm just going to lead off on the ranger. I can protect my Brontodon with a Blossoming Defense later, and this will likely get big enough. Um, we do not want a second Blossoming Defense, so I'll bin that, and we have a Rishka, which I think I'll just keep. Alright, so on the opponent's side of things, they're just going to go ahead and abrade our Jade Light Ranger. No big deal. Their courier is not going to get too much value with them still having five cards in their hand due to their so slow start, and we will have, of course, the Brontodon up soon. I say I'd have the run to run up soon, but leaving this Rishkar on top, I'm actually going to play it out first. Hopefully they won't shock it. I would be happy to trade a Blossoming Defense for a 2-mana removal spell. Preferably not a 1-mana one, one. That looks good. So the reason I'm just doing this is because it means we get a Ajani out next turn, and the sooner we can Ajani, the better. Yeah, and this is perfect. We get to beat off a cut here, which would have killed our Brontodon anyway, and now our opponent can't attack. So we get the turn back, and we can just run our Ajani, which I think I'm going to do. The opponent's stumbling on lands, and I just want to take advantage of it. That stumbling, of course, also has made their careers worse. Alright, so we found a Rishka and a Shalai off of our Ajani, which is a good hit in my books. Alright, opponent's going to play a Chain Weller out here. Not a particularly effective card in this spot. It's great against our Lanoa Elves pre-board, but other than that, is not especially good against the deck. Alright, so the opponent's going to attack with their couriers. Both of them are coming in at a journey, which suits me just fine. It means he's gaining his life as well as cards, which is always a nice spot to be in. Alright, so I do have a bit of a choice here. I have the option of minusing a journey to kill this courier with the four cards underneath it. I'm, of course, going to play out a Bronson, which can effectively block out their chain well, or even a Shalai, which can do the same. Other option is to plus a journey. It's potential to find some uh, removal in the form of a Sky Sovereign, a Angel of Sanctions, or even a Cast Out as well if we do that. And I just like drawing cards way too much to pass up on the chance to do it. Yeah, perfect. Walking Blister's even better. I kind of forgot about it before. And of course we have multiple copies of our Legends here, but I think that's okay. 
All right, so I'm just gonna play out my walking blister for two here. This allows me to just trade with the two Bowmite Couriers, get a nice two for one. And it also means that I can play out my Bronzodon to block their Chain Whirler, hopefully. I'm only just gonna worry about the Bowmite Courier, which has the four cards under it for now. I don't really see any reason to want to kill the second Bowmite Courier right away instead of later. All right, another Chain Whirler out of the opponent is annoying because it means that our Bronzodon can't effectively block the chain well because it'll already have a point of damage on it but our Johnny can still survive this hit if they go after the Johnny, if they go after our face we're in a very healthy life total so that doesn't really matter either and it looks like they're just not going to attack at all which also suits me just fine and we draw an angel of sanctions which is nice it'll be especially nice once we have some shalais going but now i'm just going to keep plussing my Johnny, keep drawing more cards i don't really see a way for them to uh win especially when we hit three off a single uptick that is nice all right, so I'm going to lead off with my Jade Light Ranger here. Mostly just want to play out a Shalai this turn, and I can do that whether or not this hits lands. Servant we don't care about, so we can bin that one. And Walking Blister number three, or number four because I've already used one, I also don't particularly care about, so we can just throw that out too. I'm going to play my Scattered Groves, no need to cycle when we're already drowning in cards. And yeah, we're just going to keep passing for now, but things are already looking pretty grim for the opponent. Remember that Johnny's Miners can take care of a Rekindling Phoenix or a Hazaret on its own. And of course, we've got Angels and Ballistas to deal with any Planeswalkers. Alright, so Shalai number one is going to go down to an Unlicensed Disintegration. But we have another one, which the opponent already knows about. And of course, we still have a fantastic board. I'm just going to keep passing my Johnny. There we go! Sky Sovereign cast out. That's what I'm talking about. Sky Sovereign is the perfect card for this board. Alright, so the Sky Sovereign's just going to kill one of the Chain Whirlers. Awesome synergy. Rishkar makes Jade Light Ranger tap for mana, so I could have also played out Shalai. And our opponent has seen enough. They're going to scoop it up. And that was a very comfortable start to game number one of our league. Let's hope we can keep it up. Alrighty, so looking at our sideboarding now against red, black, aggro slash midrange. We are taking out all of our Lanoa Elves because they just get blown out way too hard by Chain Whirler. Jade Light Ranger is also the least exciting 3-drop that we have as far as blocking goes and accelerating our main game plan. So we're just going to take all those cards out and bring in a bunch of maro removal. And we also just have this one little Bronzodon to help hold down the fort. Alrighty, so on the draw for game number 2, we have an unkeepable 7 to kick things off. Into a pretty reasonable 6. Second cast out is not something we're really after at this point. I'm gonna bottom that. Alright, so we draw a plane, which is fine. I am not inclined to cycle this cast out, so no reason to play out the planes first. And opponents is playing a second tap land and a soul sky mage, so also a pretty relaxed start out of them. So we could baffling in this guy. I alright, I'm actually gonna just baffling in the one drop here. I'm not sure if this is correct or not. Soul sky mage is very annoying with the minus one counters clause though against our deck. Alright, so opponents got a carry zeb to follow up, which is fine. We're just going to cycle our Scattered Groves right away that we drew for the turn. And we find Angel of Sanctions, which is pretty reasonable. Shalai into Angel of Sanctions is quite a nice curve, and they do synergize very well. Alright, so opponents are now going to get in for three with their Carry Zev. And they're just going to run out their turn with a Chain Whirler, which is pretty good for us because they have a lot of pretty high-impact 4-drops that I would have been much more scared of than that card. Alright, and because of that, I am going to run out Shalai. Very likely to just die here, especially we know that they're playing the uh, cut ribbons. But I don't see much value in just uh, playing cast out one of these guys or holding it up. I really want to develop my board, and if I can get Shalai to stick and then follow it up with an Angel of Sanctions, at that point we're looking very strong. Unfortunately, the opponent's got a Glorybringer, which is worst case scenario for this Shalai, as it will no doubt be taken out. And this is the kind of spot where Blossoming Defense shines. If you can Blossoming Defense in response to a Glorybringer exertion, then not only do you get to counter the exertion, but you then get to just eat the Glorybringer. This game, however, we are pretty much just dead. I do get thrown out a Servant and a Rishka, but we're going down to one if we want to kill their Carry Zev, otherwise we're just chumping their other creatures. So this is going to go to game number three. 
And opponent's got a Chandra here, which I'm just gonna scoop to. That should just kill us. Alrighty, so no changes for game number three. Play draw is very important. Of course, we had a very slow start. Opponent curved out. On the play, however, that sort of curve should be much, much stronger than what we saw just then. Alright, so we're keeping seven for game number three against red black. I'm not a big fan of this hand. It does have an accelerant, which is nice though. As I do get to play my tap land out on turn one. Problem is, I kind of want something between two and five mana at some point. And a Shalai as a turn three play it would be a nice one if this servant lives. Oh wow, the opponent just played a second land and passed back to us for their turn number two, which is very weak and surprising too. I'm gonna happily play out this Shalai. It might die, we'll see. But in any case, we've got a very strong curve to follow it up with. All right, opponent's playing a third land and just passing back to us again. Wowee. Um, so I could play out this Angel as Sanctions. I feel like I'd rather just attack for five here and hold up my Blossoming Defense in case he's got some some removal spell here. I don't really like playing the Angel for no value. Uh, the Ajani would be great if the board stays empty. And Blossoming Defense could blow out all sorts of things in this spot. Wow, just a Soul Scar Mage? All right, and there's an Abraid from the opponent. So they're trying to put some negative one counters onto our Shalai. And I think this is going to be enough to draw out my Blossoming Defense. Awesome. So we get to untap. We draw a Walking Blister for the turn. Although, of course, I am definitely going to be playing out my Ajani. We're going to plus Ajani here. Binding Servant of the Conduit and Cast Out, which is very nice. And I think I'm just going to sit back on defense. Alrighty, so the opponent's playing out the Eldest Reborn. Very strong card indeed is going to force me to sacrifice a creature. So it's the Servant's time to go, unfortunately, for him. We were out of energy anyway, so he was just a 2-2. Good news for me is that's an okay Angel Sanctions target, especially when we have... Oh, that makes it more interesting. We have a Lyra Dawnbringer now too. Man, oh man, I've just got so much of everything going on right now. So all I've got to do is discard a card to the next tick up of this guy. So I am feeling a lot like it is Lyra time. I don't even really need more cards here. So I'm actually just going to exile their Soul Scar Mage. I'm doing this because if they have a Glorybringer, I don't really want four minus one counters in my voice. Nice thing though is that... Wrong Angel. Nice thing is that my Lyra is going to make my Shalai into a 4-5 with lifelink, which puts it out of range of cut to ribbons, Glorybringer exertions, and Chandra minuses. So at this point, they really just need unlicensed disintegration to get themselves out of this. But they can't really afford to be taking up the time to play that card even at this point. So we have to discard here. We're just going to discard a Serm to the Conduit. And yeah, it's the combination of these two cards, Shalai and Lyra, which make the red matchup generally pretty favorable for us. <laughs> Our opponent's just starting off with a cycle here. I don't think they can really do much at four mana. Yes, yeah, so they're playing out a Hazaret, but Hazaret does absolutely nothing here. It can't even attack or block. It's a little way away from doing so. And we can just kill it with our Ajani, our cast out, our Angel of Sanctions, everything kills it. Also important to note is that our opponent is tapped out and we actually just have lethal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kill them. And there's the match. All right, so starting off our competitive league 1-0 against red black, the green white deck is one of my favorites because it is a deck that is happy to play against red every round. It's not massively in our favor, but it's a little bit in our favor, especially post board I find. Alrighty, so welcome to round number two of our competitive league where on the play with a reasonable opening hand, we do get a turn one Lanoa Elves off of our Hashep Oasis. And our opponent's going to start off with a Fatal Push in our Elf, which, you know, it is what it is, it's okay. Drawing a third Blister is pretty weak, but Jade Light Ranger will hopefully smooth out our draw nicely. Opponent's playing out a Knight of Malice, and we draw a Forest. So I'm just going to go ahead and play out this Jade Light Ranger, and we find a cast out on top. I, yeah, I think I'm just going to Graveyard the cast out. It's pretty good against most of the Knight decks. Uh, conveniently, we did another spell, which is going to make our Jade Light Ranger a bit larger. Servant, I don't really want either, so I'm going to bin that too. So yeah, 4-3 is pretty nice response to their 2-2 first strike. The things that our Ballistas basically do everything that the other guy does in this matchup anyway. The cast out, I mean by that. Alright, so I'm just going to play out two Walking Ballistas for one here. This might be a little greedy. 
but I love a value play. And I can smell a Rishka growing both blisters at once coming up next turn. And that is something I would just love to make happen. Fatal push on blister. That's not fun. That's no fun at all. Uh, so I could go ahead and just trade both blisters for a Knight of Malice. I don't want to... Uh, well, it's a two for two, I suppose. Because it's a removal spell and a knight for two blisters. Yeah, I'm actually just going to shoot the knight here. And it's a Knight of Grace to follow up. Which is... Weaken the Knight of Malice against us in all honesty. Of course, it does mean that they now have some 3 2s of the first strike, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill off this Knight here. Okay, so it is a pretty good draw. It blocks these creatures all very nicely. We can't attack with our Jade Light Ranger, of course, which sucks a little, but it is what it is. Alright, so the opponent's getting in here, which is concerning. It suggests that something's going to go wrong if I block with my Shalai, but I'm Pretty much just going to do it anyway and see what happens. Alright, so the block worked. And they're just going to Fatal Push post combat. You know, that's a 2 for 1 in my favour, so I'm alright with that. And we now get to enjoy the nice synergy of playing a Walking Blister for 1, followed by a Rishka, so we basically get the Blister for 2. And I'm just going to leave the counters on my non Rishka creatures. Alright, so annoyingly our opponent's just going to go ahead and cast down our walking blister, which kinda sucks, but at least we get to bash them for five this turn. We are of course out of cards, our opponent isn't, so I'm not feeling great about this spot. But with them not having any plays to make, I'm feeling a heck of a lot better. I recycle into Blossoming Defense, which is pretty nice. And I'm just going to keep bashing for five. Oh, and an Ixlan's binding from the opponent. This is going to be a sweet, sweet Blossoming Defense. Yeah, beating off these four mana removal spells with a one mana spell in response is always an amazing feeling. Yeah. And here we have a choice. We can take a turn off attacking to play out our Ajani, or we can just bash for five and force the possible Chumpak on the knight. Because it's not a lethal attack, I'm actually just going to lean towards running out the Ajani. So I'm going to plus Ajani here. Only finds a Ballista, but Ballista's a pretty good find. Okay, and the opponent's got a Gideon of the Trials to follow up with. And they will get to get two points off against our Ajani, but that's alright. I assume they're just going to plus on the J Light Ranger, and they do. Alright, so we can play a Plains. Good news for us here is that we can just go ahead and kill Gideon with Haship Oasis plus Rishka, or Cast Out, or, you know, Walking Blister plus an attack, so we've got a lot of options. Alrighty, I decided I'm just gonna go for the Shalai and hit their Gideon for two points here. I could also hit their face, which uh, would give me a lethal attack next turn, potentially. So, on second thoughts, I'm gonna hit that face. Alrighty, and the opponent untaps and scoops it up, so we're off to a 1-0 start against the white-black mid-range deck. Alrighty, so looking at our sideboarding against the white-black mid-range deck, I'm not super sure on this sideboarding plan, but my plan is to bring in Nissa's, Brontodons, and Heroic Intervention. I'm a bit scared of them potentially having Wraths, as they did seem to have a few Planeswalkers and removal spells. They didn't seem to necessarily be all in on the Knight's plan. I am cutting some Walking Blisters and Rishgars because I just don't think they get quite enough done in the matchup. There is potential for a couple of Glint Sleeve Siphoners, but it's probably unlikely to be a full playset if there are any at all. And looking at our opening seven for game number two in round number two, I am going to keep it. This is a pretty dicey keep though. I'm pretty heavily leaning on the Servant of the Conduit to get us there, unless we uh, just happen to naturally hit our third land drop. Alright, opponent's just passing to us for the first two turns. Hopefully they're not just going to push or cast down this guy, as if we miss on a land, that would be terrible. Although it looks like we're going to get there. I'm anticipating Jade Light will bail us out of our mana screw. Alright, we didn't draw land for turns, so Jade Light's going to have to get it done. That's not a land. Sun Petal Grove, however, is, and we also hit a Lanoa Elf. So hopefully our mana problems will be over as long as our board stays intact. Alright, opponent's going to attack with one of their knights from History of Benalia. I'm happy to take the trade here. The Jade Light Ranger doesn't really do anything for us in play, and these guys are going to get bigger next turn anyway. They do have another History, though, so this pressure is going to get very real very soon. 
All right, we draw a servant. I'm almost tempted to just cast out the history on one to deny them of a knight and a second round of buffing their guys. Because taking a single hit for eight seems like it's kind of survivable. Could also trade out a thrashing Bronson instead if I decide that I value that more. I think I'd rather have the Brontodon just as a creature though. The reason for that is that it's just a really good blocker in the matchup and after this initial hit it should absorb some of this damage nicely. I'm gonna hold back on the Servant. I could get in here. It's close but I just like having lots of mana available with this deck. I'd rather not make the trade. Alright so the opponent's gonna follow up with a Ravenous Chupacabra. This is annoying because if we Blossoming Defense we'll be using our last point of energy so for that reason I think we're better off just not doing it. We did draw a forest for the turn which is excellent. We now get to follow up with Brontodon, hold up our Blossoming Defense rather than run out the Servant because the Brontodon, if protected, will just hold down this whole board. Alrighty, opponent's gonna play out a Gideon of the Trials, which is annoying because it can uptick on our Brontodon. So I could Blossoming Defense it. I don't see any value in doing that. What I'm going to instead do here is block two of their creatures and Blossoming Defense on my own Llanowa Elves. I'm gonna just kill off a knight rather than the Chupacabra, and opponent has a knight of malice to follow up. Cool, so we just draw another Blossoming Defense. Blossoming Defense is great, so that seems good. Brunsonon number two also seems good because it will overstretch their Gideon. I could also cast out the Gideon here, but I'd rather develop my board in a more meaningful way, and Gideon isn't the most threatening other than his zero at this point. Chupacabra is definitely a card that will draw out the Blossoming Defense. Alright, so the defense works. Opponent's going to uptick on our Bronthron that is not Hexproof. And is not going to get to attack this turn. And we draw a Plains. At this point, I'm feeling pretty inclined to kill a Gideon because our Bronthrons are having to work pretty hard and our life total is very low. Our opponent does have one more card in hand though, and we don't. They also have these two if near deadlands hanging around so i am not feeling good about where we're at right now make that three if near deadlands all right no attacks from the opponent back to us not even a deadlands activation which surprises me a little bit astroing a forest though is upsetting i could play it i could not it doesn't really matter either way this way they might be a bit scared of blossoming defense but I'd only play it out if I actually have a spell. And another land here is not good either. I'm gonna play out the planes though. Ooh. And it is going to be a Vraska's Contempt from the opponent on one of our Bronsodons, which is bad. Bad for us anyway. And they're also gonna fire off one of their Deadlands. So, in the uh, board stall game, it looks like the opponent top decked their way out first, although this is a Ballista which we can cast for x equals 4, which is pretty big on this board. But yeah, we've got so many big cards in this board. We've got the potential for a Sky Sovereign. An Angel of Sanctions would be good too, because if it dies we can embalm it. Lyra, of course, is amazing. Ajani, and so on. Alright, another knight from our opponent. Not the scariest thing in the world anymore. Profane Procession, however, is very scary. This is probably going to force us to spend our Thrashing Brontodon because the moment they start exiling creatures, we're not winning that game. We get to draw a Blossoming Defense, which is pretty reasonable. We could hold that up to just fade one of these Procession uses. Yeah, I'm gonna hold up the Defense. If they wanna spend five mana, that's basically their whole turn spent tapping out for the Procession activation. So blanking that seems like it could be pretty important to us when we can also get an extra counter onto our Ballista in that time. Alrighty, so the opponent's just going to pass to us. I'm going to take this opportunity to put one counter onto Blister. Not the second one, of course, because we don't want our Blister to be exiled. Alright, they're going to go for the exile in response, so we will Blossoming Defense. Defense works. And now we can start killing some of these enemy creatures. So I'm going to start off by picking off the Knight of Malice. Alright, and that's a planes, which is pretty solid, because now I'm just going to cash in the Bronsodon, and I have enough mana to put two counters on my Ballista. Alright, opponent's going to Deadlands our Llanowa Elves. Ooh, and the reason for that is they're following up with a Doomfall, 
this is scary. So we do get to shoot down two of our opponent's creatures here, which is nice. I'm gonna kill the two knights. All right, so both players out of cards. We need to answer two chupacabras. We just find a planes, so we have one last turn in which to find an answer and hopefully stabilize. We're down to two life. Opponent has a scrap heap scrounger as well. And we find an elf. So that was a pretty unexciting game, all things said. Both opponents flooded out pretty badly. So Walking Blister looked really good there because we both flooded out, but would we be curving out? The Ballista would be pretty terrible. Uh, we also didn't see any Glint Sleeve Siphoners, so I'm happy to keep it at two Ballistas and run it back. Alrighty, so I've got a pretty reasonable opening seven for game number three. Decent hand on the play, as it is a little slow. Alright, so our fourth line is good. We could run out our walking ballista, but it doesn't really do much if we do, so I'm just going to pass the turn. Yeah, Knight of Mouths from the opponent, which is fine. We draw a Servant, which would have been awesome last turn, but this turn it's definitely time for our 3-4. Alright, so opponent is playing a land and passing to us, which is nice. So we could play out Shalai here. I feel like, though, if we can play Shalai with Blossoming Defense back up, that could be a real problem for our opponent. So for that reason, and also because we're not under any pressure, I'm just going to run out the Servant of the Conduit here. So whether to attack or not, it's an interesting question here. I am going to go for it. It's not really clear who's the beatdown. It depends how these decks, depends how these games rather play out. And we do have the option to save our Servant here with our Blossoming Defense. I'm actually going to let it go. If we draw a land, we can Shalai with defense back up next turn. If not, I'll just Shalai anyway, hoping that they don't have more removal spells. Opponent has the second knight so that they can get all the value of having both going. And yeah, we did draw the land, which is sweet. So now we get to hold up Blossoming Defense so that our guys are nice and protected. So Shalai is sticking, and we're just going to pass the turn. Sit back on defense until we can build up to our Angel of Sanctions and Ballista. Big haymakers in the matchup. Okay, opponent is passing back to us. That's not bad. Oh, going for the upkeep for Asks Contempt. Makes perfect sense. Wanting to tax our mana on our turn. We do draw an Angel of Sanctions though, which is pretty nice. I'm just going to run out the Ballista instead of the Angel. Don't have great targets for it yet. And since they gave us the little attack boost, I'm going to bash for five here. And they're still in a spot where they can't really attack. Okay, so opponent's going for a Scavenger Grounds activation. Ah, that would be why. So Shalai is going to go down here, which is kind of sad. I was hoping to start getting to activate it next turn to put counters on the Ballista while growing the rest of our team at the same time. I am, however, content just to sit back and put counters on our Ballista if nothing else is happening there. Alright, so there is a History of Benalia from the opponent. We're going to end step, put a counter on our Ballista. Alright, and they have a Forsake the World loop, so that is okay. We still get the two for one, and we get to kill off their Knight of Malice here. Okie dokie, it's time to run out our Angel. Opponent's out of cards anyway and we can always embalm up later. I could go after the history of Benalia, which will deny them of a token. I think I'd rather just kill the token that's already in play, because it'll be gone forever. And this lets me start beating down with my Bronteron. So we're hoping the opponent misses on their draws. And they did pass back to us, so that's looking good. And there we go. We failed to draw any big haymakers last game, but a Jani is about as good as it gets, and the opponent will just scoop when they see it, all right, so that <laughs> didn't, neither player was really curving out in an ideal way, but we did get there, we pushed on through, and we're now up 2-0 in our league. Welcome back to round number three, we are on the draw with a zero lander, and a slightly dodgy six, but we'll definitely keep it and just try to find a second green source. When you mulligan, you sometimes just need to get there with the draws off the top of your deck. Servant's not a bad one. Alrighty, so it looks like another red-black opponent. They're leading on a carry Zeb, which is definitely a strong play here. And we just really need this Servant to live. If it dies and we fail to draw a green source next turn, we could be in trouble. If we get to start casting these Jade Light Rangers, though, we're good. And oh, it's dying. So at this point, it's basically green source or bust. And 
we did draw a green source. Not the most exciting one. It's tapped. At least we have this blister to play out to use our mana. I have a feeling, though, that this blister is not going to get much done this game. Yeah, we're not going to block with a blister here. At least it can potentially team up with a Jade Light Ranger to deal with this carry Zev. Is probably the best use I can see for it. And a scrap heap out of the opponent. Alright, so drawing Sky Sovereign. We just need to hit lands off these Jade Light Rangers now. That's not a land. That is. Okay, okay. Staying alive. Just want to say at this point, this is why I love Jade Light Ranger. Because we're a deck that really wants to hit its 5 and 6 drops and so on. We don't want to miss our land drops. Jade Light Ranger helps us to keep our land count at a completely reasonable total of 24 and still hit our land drops. We are taking a beating this game though, so... <laughs> yeah, without naturally drawing lands, I'm sort of forced to be playing more Jade Light Rangers. Whereas I really would have loved to curve out a boat there. Alright, we do find a land that's a tap land again. So things are looking dicey. Alrighty. So, our opponent is going for a big attack here. This suits me just fine, because what I can do is block the carry Zeb and then shoot the monkey so that I'm not dead to a lightning strike. And this Jade Light Ranger can just eat up the carry Zev. Yeah, thankfully that block worked. Removal in the Jade Light would have probably been game ending at that point. Alright, there's a Soul Scar Mage. Followed up by a Scrap Heap Scrounger, so still scary from the opponent. Alright, we need to start cleaning up our opponent's board, and we need to start doing it now. I think that means that it is boat time. So I've already seen two of braids out of the opponent. Hopefully they don't have a third one, or an unlicensed integration. Either of those would be fatal here. And that is a disintegration, which, yep, is definitely fatal. So even though we can crew here, we are going to take three damage off of this. We get a prowess trigger off of the Solskar Mage, which means that these are both lethal threats, so we're dead. Alrighty, so sideboarding is just like in match number one. We're taking out all of our elves because they suck against Chain Whirler and putting in a bunch of removal spells. Hopefully we won't stumble in game number two and we can put a win on the board. Alrighty, welcome back for game number two in round number three. We've got another kind of slow opener here, but it is definitely a keep. Hopefully being on the play is going to help us out here. Good thing about this opener is that if we can curve our Ballista into our Rishkar without getting them killed, they will not only get a bigger Ballista out of the deal, we'll also get an extra Mana Dork. Alright, so we're going to stick our Ballista here, drawing our planes for turn. And the opponent has Ether Hub, Solskar Mage, and that seems to be it. So we draw a second Ballista, which is not exciting in this spot. So we are going to run out our Rishka. Nice, and you can see now our Ballista does tap for mana. Yeah, I'm going to get aggressive with the Ballista though in this spot. If our opponent stumbles, we can punish them for it. And the opponent has another tap land, which bodes well. And it's an abrade for the opponent on our Rishka, which is going to turn off the mana production of our Ballista as well. We can still run out our Shalai next turn though, so I think that this is just okay. Had the option of killing the Solskar Mage in response to the Prowess trigger, but I don't think that's necessary at all. So drawing a land there is totally fine. We now get to make our Ballista Hexproof and bash for two. Alright, opponent's got a Goblin Chain Whirler. I don't want it to put minus one counters and everything, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill off the Soulscar Mage in response. And having done that, the Chain Whirler is not really a particularly relevant card. Alright, so I'm going to run out my Angel here. It is Hexproof, so they're unlikely to get back their Chain Whirler in a hurry. And having gotten a little aggressive earlier on, I feel like if we can just keep chipping in, chipping in, we might just be able to outrace our opponent with their slow start. Alright, it's an unlicensed disintegration for the opponent, which will kill our Shalai. But we still get our Angel of Sanctions, and that's a nice draw. We get to now run out our Ballista for two here, and hold up a Blossoming Defense. Still chipping in, opponent's already down to ten life, and with the threat of a Hashap Oasis activation next turn, we're getting to the point where we have lethal. Now our opponent's playing cut on our Ballista here. This is interesting. I'm just going to go for the defense because there's a decent chance they have no more removal and they're just going to die it here. So yeah, let's go for it. I can't see any one mana removal spell killing my angel, so I'm going to choose it over the Ballista to get the buff. Get in for eight and then, yep, that's the win. 
So just like our opponent punished us for stumbling game number one, we get to punish the red-black opponent for stumbling in game number two. Ooh, and we have a weak opener for game number three, but I'm gonna keep it because the baffling end and all of the lands can be okay as long as we hit our spells. Of course, drawing more lands would be a disaster here, but I don't think you can mulligan this sort of hand on a deck that really wants to hit all of its land drops. Opponent does have a turn one play though, which is unfortunate, and we do draw a plane, so not only a land, but the weakest land of the deck. All right, and they're just getting in for one and passing to us. So we can baffling in their soul scar mage, or we could just wait it out. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just go for the baffling end, which does not feel good, but this minus one counter ability is just so good against uh, so many of our threats. And we do have the thopter arrest for anything too scary that comes down. All right, so it's a chain weller. And we are flooding, we are flooding indeed. Yeah, I think I just need to keep removing their threats, which feels really bad. But again, in this sort of spot, we could just easily draw a Lyra and take over the game, so certainly not a dire spot. Okay, so we're gonna run a Ballista for two here. If this lives and we get to get Rishka to grow it, then at that point we might be looking to get a bit more stable. Definitely going to 14 here. All right, opponent passes to us, which is nice, and that blossoming defense could save us from being blown out as we go to play this Rishka. Yeah, and they're gonna go for the Abrade, which means that I'm gonna get to save my Ballista and grow my two creatures. So the ideal scenario is they do this on their turn, so I get to also stop their Chain Whirler from attacking. But at least I get in for five damage this way. All right, opponent hits their fourth land into a Rekindling Phoenix, which is strong, certainly. However, Walking Ballista is a very good answer, especially that we have the mana to pump it up to a 4-4. Opponent's tanking before deciding to attack. We are entering a real race situation at this point, and oh, you know what's good in a race? Lyra Dawnbringer. So yeah, we're definitely playing this out. Really hoping they don't have an answer. We also get to attack with our Rishka here, because if they block it, then we just get to spend one counter to kill the Phoenix off. So I think that's a pretty clear attack. All right, and we haven't seen black men from the opponent yet, so there's a good chance they can't kill this. And a Khan Sign of Urza is not black mana. Or is it? Etherhub Chandra. Given I don't have a Blossoming Defense, and that... Lyra survives Chandra, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and give them the Chandra here, which may seem a little bit weird, but I think it's the right play. All right, and we draw a Thrashing Bronzedon, which doesn't get a whole lot done here, but what could get a lot done is either double Ballista activations, or alternatively, alternatively just uh, cracking our hash up Oasis. Mm. I think I'm just gonna go with the Lyra attack here. All right, so I'm going to combat we have also the option of attacking their face or the Khan, which is also not super clear cut. I think I'm going to attack the Khan though, because I actually just want to keep them off that ether hub more than anything. All right, and no box from the opponent means we go to 16, Khan goes down to 1, and now we're going to definitely clean that up with a Ballista Shot. And I am also going to just go ahead and run out this Brontodon rather than double pump my ballista the single pump will have to do all right fifth mountain from the opponent not a black source all right there's that chandra we let them have hopefully we don't live to regret it all righty they're going to go ahead and trade the chandra for the ballista here so we get to put a counter on this kill the chandra and then just ping our opponent twice which does mean that they're dead to two hits from the lyra which is a pretty big deal Biggest problem for us now is that, in theory, the Rekindling Phoenix can block the Lyra forever. I think the play here, though, is to sack the Hash Up Oasis, pumping my Rishka so that it can attack through the Chain Whirler, which means our opponent can have one good block with the Phoenix on the Bronze Island, but if they go for that, they then have to chump with their Chain Whirler. Yeah, and they go for the block that we thought they would. So we are at 21 life, and we have a lot of ways to exile that Phoenix in our deck. Looking for three Ballistas, looking for two Thopteras, three Cast Outs, two Ajanis. We can cast any of them. Ooh, we are going to lose our Rishka to this Chain Weller here. But our opponent still can't attack in fear of this Lyra. Lands, though, drawing lands is pretty bad. 
At least we're getting five a turn, which is buying us a lot of time to find those big haymakers. It's also buying our opponent time, though, to finally fix up their mana problem and presumably be able to cast whatever's left in their hand. All right, this land cycles, which is great. And that's a walking ballista, bingo. Alrighty, so this time we get to attack, our opponent is forced to block yet again, only this time. This time they're not going to get their phoenix back. Bye bye elemental token. Alright, opponent's going to finish off our ballista. I'm pretty positive this elemental can't come back, I'm just going to ping it a second time just because I am super paranoid. And of course, five versus four life is unlikely to matter here. You can actually blister for four anyway. Uh-oh, there's the black mana. One turn before our opponent was dead. They are out of cards though, and we're at 27 on the empty board. Come on. There's a Thopter Arrest. I think I can afford to hold that. I don't think that the Chain Well is enough of a threat for me to need to cast it yet. All right, down to 21. No more plays from the opponent. Cycling lands are good, because we can get something else. Servant of the Conduit is something else. Still not going to Thopter Arrest. Soul Scumage out of the opponent. And yeah, they can't attack anymore, because they're in such a low life total. So another Servant of the Conduit here is pretty poor. But when they're on four life, even that's okay. All I want's a boat. <laughs> All right, a Brontodon is no boat, but it's... A pretty good creature on this board. In fact, at this point, I am gonna thop to arrest on the chain weller. Our opponent's blocks are probably awful. And if they do have a removal spell, this way they're gonna be forced to use it on a servant rather than my Brontodon. They don't, they're down to two. And it looks like we're about to beat Red Black for a second time. This time on the draw for game three. And there it is, there it is. We are now 3-0 in our competitive league on green, white, and mid-range. Red-black games are always tense, but Lyra Dawnbringer really pulling it through for us. Alrighty, welcome to round number four. We are on the draw, but this is one of the better openers we've had all league long. Turn one elf into turn two jade light, then Shalai is a pretty sweet curve. No fatal push is good news for us. Wow, no two drop either. This is good. Boat's also a very sweet card. And Lyra Dawnbringer, eh? Hmm. Not my favorite card against black green decks. I do have to answer it though. Yeah, I'm just like I'm just gonna bin it. Curving Shalai into Lyra is good, but we already have this Sky Sovereign, and I really uh like getting value payoff cards like a Johnny and a Sky Sovereign and Angel of Sanctions more so than the uh, Lyra against this sort of deck. The Cultivator's Caravan, this is interesting. Not really sure what's going on, to be honest. Alright, so we drew a Rishka. So we can either play out our Shalai or play the Rishka. I kind of like the Rishka plan just because it gives us a million mana next turn. Our J Light Ranger's already got a counter on it. So it can already make mana as it is. We could even cycle the Scattered Grove, but I am happy to get in for 5 damage. Alright, opponent's playing another If Needed Land, so worth remembering that they have a lot of removal in their mana base at the moment. And it's a Liliana Death's Majesty, which frankly on this board does not seem very good. Liliana, importantly, cannot reanimate our Lyra, it can only reanimate their own cards. And what we can do here is we can slam Sky Sovereign, kill the zombie, and then kill Jade Light with our two creatures. Oh sorry, kill Liliana with our Jade Light and our Rishka. So that was about as good as trades get. All right, and here's an hour promise from the opponent. So they are gonna start to get some zombies together, but we have a boat. All right, the opponent has also ascended with an arch of Azka, but if I get my way, they will not have time to do anything with that arch. All righty, so I now get to crew the boat with the Sky Sovereign. I have clear attacks with both Rishka and the Sky Sovereign, because the Sky Sovereign will kill a zombie as it attacks. Hmm. I will admit, I forgot that Cultivator's Caravan was a thing. So, we are going to lose our Rishka here needlessly. So a bit sloppy on my part. But, we still have our Shalai plus Sky Sovereign, which gives us lethal damage in the air right now. All right, and it's going to be a Khan out of the opponent. Let's see what they do with it. They're just gonna plus, let's give them a swamp, and their follow-up play is going to be to kill our Shalai. We do have a backup, however, and that backup gives us exactly lethal damage, by the way. 
let's not forget that. So we're going to cycle the Scattered Grove at end step, get a Walking Blister, which is also pretty good. And just in case we wanted more Shall Eyes, there's number three showing up to the party. But now we get to crew our Sky Sovereign here. And this time, nothing can be crewed, but we're going to send everything at the face. Kill the zombie before blocks and just see if they're dead. Everything is hexproof. Yep, that is it. Game number one successful. All right, so for sideboarding, I don't really know what my opponent's deck is or is trying to do. I saw Salt Eye stuff. I saw a lot of black removal. So I'm just going to bring in a sort of anti-control package. Heroic Interventions and Nissas, just good cards against lots of removal generally. Blisters and Rish cards and stuff and Daylight Rangers are just my usual cuts in a control matchup. So let's submit this. Oh wow, and we have a super dodgy seven, which I'm going to keep. I'm not sure if this is right or not. Keeping it purely because I can cycle uh, two of the lands. Drawing another land there is of course awful. And cast outs hopefully fine. Johnny will probably be eventually good because it usually is. Opponent's done a lot of nothing, which you know is all right because we're doing nothing. And we've found more lands. I'm gonna cycle this scattered grabs now because we had an elf, we don't. But we are finally starting to have a decent mix of lands and spells after doing all that cycling. Hopefully keeping such a slow hand doesn't come back to bite us. Oh, our opponent just missed a land drop though, so I feel like casting cast out on this Cultivator's Caravan could be good because this Painted Bluffs is a very inefficient land. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because if I can just play lands and get an Ajani out while they're stumbling on lands, then I'm probably winning that game. Yeah, and the opponent's just passing back to us, missing a land drop again. So that bodes very well indeed. We also just drew a boat, and I like boats. All right, they found a land, it's tapped. So they are just gonna pass back to us. So we have the option of playing the Shalai and getting aggressive with Blossoming Defense back up, or just playing the Ajani out here. And the aggression that this play offers of uh, just playing the Shalai out with that Blossoming Defense back up is just so good that I think I'm gonna do it. Like, they're clearly some sort of ramp deck with our promise and caravans. So rather than wait to find out, what that deck is trying to do, I feel like it's generally a good idea to just go and kill them. All right, so Bronzedon here is a bit sad uh, for us. So they could kill the cast out if they're super worried about their mana. Most likely they're gonna kill this Sky Sovereign. The reason why it's sad is they can kill it in response to us crewing. I guess I still attempt to crew it. Cause yeah, the artifacts won't get hexproof from Shalai. They're just gonna let that happen though. That's surprising. So we'll get in with the Sky Sovereign. So we do connect. And with that Brontodon on one point, I think I'm actually going to force him to use it on this caravan by playing out a Walking Ballista. So I can play this out for three while holding up Blossoming Defense. Use one of those three to kill the Brontodon. And then my opponent has the choice. Either they can kill the... Well, they can't kill anything else. This is Hexproof. So they don't have a choice, they just have to kill the cast out. And now they're dead on board, our stuff is mostly hexproof. We can certainly get past this fatal push. The opponent's in the tank here. All right, the opponent's playing an hour of promise. So they get two zombies. Maybe they have like double fatal push and they want revolt, but even then they're still dead. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add a counter to my walking ballista and crew Sky Sovereign with the ballista so that I can get in in the air with the Shalai. And if this Sky Sovereign connects, even if the Shalai doesn't, they're dead to the ballista. All right, yeah, the opponent taps for black and then scoops it up. Hostage taker, hostage taker, hour of promise scarab guard. Rightio, so... I guess the opponent's deck was just playing a bunch of good things in Saltai was the idea, but clearly they were far too slow this game, missing a bunch of their land drops, and uh, that's why it's good to be able to be proactive, be able to go for the beatdowns, because we're now 4-0 in our competitive league. Wow, we, we got a 5-0 in our last video, and we could be doing it yet again, this time in standard. This time in a competitive rather than a friendly league. Let's see how we do it. Alrighty, welcome to round number five of our competitive standard league with green-white mid-range. We've got a 
mediocre, very land heavy hand to open it off. Just got a little bit worse with the Sun Petal Grove. I feel like that happens every time you keep a land heavy hand. But of course we do have the Scattered Groves to mitigate against it. And if this Servant lives, then we may have a quick liar. Although it looks like based on our opponent's start, they might just be playing a control deck against which Lyra is terrible. Yeah, there's an Essence Scatter on the Servant. I say Lyra is terrible against control just because you get no extra value and five mana creatures that die to black based removal just don't really do much for you. Champion of Wits from the opponent is a follow up. So it looks like they're the blue black mid range deck. So their only counters would be Essence Scatter and Supreme Well, I believe. Ditching a champion. Nice value. Does mean we get some value of our own with our green champion. Ranger finds a servant, which I don't really want right now. And a blossoming defense. Huh. Yeah, I like blossoming defense. So Lyra gets good against, I mean, anything really, once you can protect it. So playing a Lyra on six with blossoming defense backup is, you know, it's not nothing. We are going to attack into their champion here. They're probably happy to chump to get it in the graveyard, but... You know, there's still a few turns away from being able to start eternalizing their champions. Yeah, so that trade happens, or that chump happens. I'm going to go ahead and cycle my Stutter Groves now in case I get a playable spell. And, I mean, Bliss is a playable spell, but I'd rather play it for two next turn, I think. Does that make sense? Oof, that's a good one. Scarab God, we don't have an answer to that right now, even though our deck is loaded full of answers to it. Yikes. Yeah, this is about to get really scary. Uh, I think I'm going to attack with my Jade Light Ranger just to slow them down by a turn if they go for the block. We'll just ping off the Scarab Guard and send it back to their hand with the Blister. A bad long-term play, but we're not actually in a position to deal with this. And until we get a Cast Out, an Angel of Sanctions, or an Ajani, we've got plenty of answers in our deck, but until we draw one of them, I'd rather just slow them down from getting to bring back those champion wits. So yeah, they get it back to their hand. So now they spend another turn playing the Scarab God. We now get to put our Lyra in play. Oh, unless we find something better, like an answer to the Scarab God. Absolutely, we'll exile. Now we get to get in for one. Blossoming Defense is up to protect our Angel. And with the Lyra coming next turn, hopefully this does it for us. Our opponent does know, uh, Saying our opponent does know about the Blossoming Defense, Second Scarab Guard is frustrating. We also just drew a Sky Sovereign. Huh. So Sky Sovereign is interesting here, but it's not actually faster than Lyra. I guess the question then is, is it better than Lyra? And I feel like the answer might be yes. It's actually really close here. If Sky Sovereign could kill the uh, champions once they got brought back by the Scarab Guard, I'd definitely get it. But I don't really want to be pumping my mana into the Ballista to pick them off as I go through, I don't think. So I might just go for the Lyra because it's just such an amazing card at racing. Also buffs up my Angel of Sanctions, making it a 4-5 with Lifelink. So, you know, but just because of how good the Angels are at racing, I feel like this is probably the way to go. Best draw in a spot like this is just more, is just probably Shalai. Otherwise, Blossoming Defenses. And yeah, our opponent's going to go ahead and grab a Champion Witch in their upkeep. So with them digging four cards, plus their draw step, five cards deep, you know, they're going to find the removal that they need. Just a question of, will there be enough of it? Another scary thing is if they kill our Angel of Sanctions and then they get it back with their Scarab Guard, if they can do that, at that point, we are in trouble town. Alrighty, so the opponent discarded a Glint Sleeve Siphoner and another copy of the Scarab Guard. You're gonna drain us for one. Alrighty, and they're just gonna pass to us. Can't attack into that Lyra. And they're playing out an Argwell's Bloodfast. That's an interesting one. Doesn't seem particularly good in this spot to me. Neither does another boat. Alright, so by my count, we could, with a Blossoming Defense, in theory, do a total of 14 damage here. I've got nine from our angels. We can shoot with the ballista. We can pump with the blossoming defense. That's nine, 10, 11, 12. It's actually 15 with our hash up oasis. They've only got one mana open. Yeah, I can't think of a spell in the format which actually has us dead with only one mana open. I'd have to play around cast down if they had two open, but 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is lethal, right? Alright, Blossoming Defense. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's connecting. And kill them with walking blister? Yeah, that's it. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. I'll take it, and that means we've got two shots and they're just one game away from the 5-0 with green-white mid-range. Alrighty, so for game number two against this blue-black mid-range deck, I'm bringing a couple of Thopterus, not all three of them, because I already have a lot of exile effects on my main board, but because this has more than just the uh, Scarab Woods, it's got the Champion of Woods' really good targets, I'm quite happy to have these in the deck, I think. Heroic Intervention, they've got a lot of removal. I kind of like just having more protection spells in the deck. Nissa's just really good in a grind and really good at recovering if our board gets cleaned out. And I'm struggling to find cards I actually don't want here. So I'm taking out a couple of Jade Light Rangers and Rishkas because they're just the easiest things to cut, really. And a boat, just because its activation doesn't kill things as much as I'd like it to. Keeping in the Walking Blisters because they are, I believe, a Glint Sleeve Siphon the deck. And shooting down a champion on one is pretty decent too. Alright, so I've got an opening 7 here, which I am going to mulligan. Two lands, no accelerants, lots of big spells. Like, this could work out well if we draw lands, but there's just a significant risk of us doing nothing. And of course it gets worse. Uh, so I'm going to go to 5. And that's 0 lands. And we're keeping 4. Alrighty, um, mm, I guess I'm keeping a forest. This is gonna be a rough one. Turn on elf, let's see if we can draw maybe like a jade light ranger, which I cut two out of my three of would be good to recover from this. Yeah, look, it's gonna be tough. There goes Eleanor elves. We have another one. And there it goes. So, I mean, a Johnny is the kind of card that can get you back from behind, but there's no way we're casting this before our opponent's going insane, and yeah, the Ajani's about to be named by a Spyglass too. I do have a lot of ways to kill that Spyglass though, so that in itself isn't a big concern. The main concern is that we, you know, started off down three cards, and that's a big deficit to overcome. Alright, well, our opponent hasn't actually played anything, and we're hitting our land drops, so... I mean, that's something, right? Uh, sure, our opponent's gonna kill our Hashap Oasis because it killed them in the last game. We can't use this mana, there's no actual reason to float it. All right, and here's a champion which from the opponent. Find a land, they ditch two lands off their champion. All right, we have a Johnny mana. No point in actually running him out because of this Spyglass. And opponent's just passing to us, so they might be flooded enough for this to end up being Okay, potentially. We get to cycle the scattered groves here into a sun petal grove. We manage to <laughs> keep the uh, four card hand with two lands in it, and we've now actually fought it out ourselves too. Alright, now things are getting serious. The opponent's got a scarab guard. And yeah, we're not drawing anything that does anything, so. This is going to be over shortly. They're just going to start getting back out. Lanawa Elves as 4-4s, four and we'll be dead soon. Not going to scoop it up just yet, because we could do something like Angel of Sanctions to pick off the Spyglass, then a Johnny to pick off the Scarab Guard. Look, I don't know. I don't think we can do much. Yeah, it's Lanawa the 7. Alright, game number 3. We do have another shot for the 5-0. Uh, it's a very disappointing game number two. I don't think that you can see a game like that and just assume that it was correct to keep the original hand that we had. I do, however, think that bringing in a Brontodon over our Jade Light Ranger is fairly reasonable here, just because of the uh, Sorceress Spyglass that we had to deal with last time. And yeah, this configuration I'm very unsure about. There is the potential for some counter magic, maybe, so the Serpapods could be a consideration, but... I also just kind of like all of the cards that are in our deck right now as well. Alrighty, with Accelerants I can keep this. Certainly bad if our opponent does like double Fatal Push like last time, but we can we can definitely keep this. Okay, opponent's on six, so nothing disastrous like our multi four. But hey, if uninterrupted and if we pick up a land in the next two draws, this is a turn three Nissa hand, and that's nothing to be uh, sneered at. Could also just be a Shalai hand, which is also fine. Would really like to hit my land drop though. All right, and we miss. So she lies on the stack. The sad thing about Seven of the Conduit is we only get two activations out of it, whereas in a spot like this, where we're missing land drops, would ideally be able to get mana out of it for the whole game. 
But the reason why it's great is because it fixes our mana as well, because we've got like double white cards, double green cards. Alrighty, the opponent does have the Essence Scatter for Ashley, which, you know, isn't great. If I did draw the land there, I'd definitely have gone for the Nissa because I am aware that this deck usually only runs Essence Scatter and Supreme Will, I think, as the only counter spells. All right, so opponent's not having the mana issues that we're having. Passing back to us. Plains is a good draw. Now the question here is, can we go for a Nissa, Or should we go for a Nissa even? Um, Supreme Will seems really bad for us if we go for the Nissa. So I'm leaning towards just playing out the Walking Ballista if a two instead, just because if they had a normal functioning hand, you'd assume that they'd be going for like a Champion Wits or some creature by turn three. Yeah, so let's go for Blister on two. See if it resolves. It's an Essence Scatter, which, you know, doesn't tell us if they were holding up Supreme Will or not. We get in for two. All right, and the opponent's going for a Sorceress Spyglass, which, you know, means that they can name Nissa if they want to, but that does enable us to play out our cast out on the Spyglass if we want to. Yeah, they do name Nissa, of course. And they play Argwell's Bloodfast, which puts me in a tricky spot because I want to kill both. And yeah, yeah, that helps. Question now is what do I play? I feel like maybe I should just try to resolve the Nissa while they're tapped out, but this doesn't actually do anything on its own. Yeah, I'm gonna actually slam the Nissa. All right, and they're going for a Scarab Guard, which resolves. Ooh, drawing in the Jani is rough after using the last bit of energy that we had. We could draw like an Ether Hub, that would be amazing. That would let us cast this right away. Uh, but they do have a Scarab God now active. I've got a Shalai in my bin, which means I am pretty sure that I am going to be playing cast out on this Scarab God. We can always brunt it on away the Spyglass. We get in for two damage. All right, opponent's activating Bloodfast to draw a card, and it's a never on our Lanoa Elves. So we really want to draw a land here. Ooh, Servant of the Conduit is not quite it. Good news is it turns on our other Servant as a mana producer. So there is a world in which the opponent does something like slam a Scarab God and we just get to untap a Johnny and exile it and then we get to feel great about life. That requires us to draw a land. Uh, they're just gonna pass to us. We do draw the land though. Wow, it's a tricky spot here. Very tricky. I can't really sit back because they've got this Bloodfast active, so if I do nothing, they just get to draw cards and uh, sink me in card advantage. So I'm pretty sure I'm just supposed to go for the Bruntodon here. We can pay for a Supreme Will using all that energy. All right, it resolves. So I'll go ahead and kill the Spyglass. All right, and they've got a Raskus Contempt, which, you know, it's not that surprising. At least we've turned on our second copy of Nissa should we draw it. And that Raskus Contempt could have always killed out Ajani, which is something to note too. Okay, opponent's casting return here. Just making a zombie and passing back to us. Ooh, boy. So unless they've got a negate, which seems unlikely to me, this Ajani could easily resolve here. And it does. All right, let's see if we get some hits. Just a Lanowar Elf to start things off. Hopefully this Ajani survives, otherwise, you know, with only that one Elf as a hit, that's not ideal. It's also worth noting that our opponent's only on seven life here. So we are getting close to just killing them. All right, opponent plays a Fetid Pools and just passing the turn, whew, and we get to activate. This is huge. Opter Arrest, not the worst. And these servants are just vanilla tutus. I'm just gonna slam them into the zombie. Don't think I wanna be spending a Blossoming Defense to uh, push through. So I'll let these guys trade. Run out some more dorks post combat. It's important to note that these dorks are technically a lethal threat, especially with Blossoming Defense and Hash App Oasis. It's scared of the opponent's end step though. It's so a commit on our cast out, uh-oh. Big question now is if our opponent has an 8th land, an untapped land. We've currently got Shalai, Thrashing, Brontodon, Servant of the Conduit, and Walking Blister in our graveyard. So Shalai is the obvious choice, but we can Thopter Arrest plus a Johnny Minus to get through two things. Oh man, this is getting intense. I really want the fiver. Alright, opponent's gone to the upkeep, elected not to draw a card off Bloodfast, keep their life total at 5. Okay, opponent's also letting their... Upkeep trigger resolve before reanimating anything. All right, this wreckage is tricky for us. So Ajani is going down to three here, 
Problem is our opponent can get Shalai at instant speed, and the uh, temple is actually that 8th land we were talking about. So if I were to minus here, oh, does this change anything? I don't think so. Yeah, and they can also sacrifice to gain 4 or 5 toughness. Man, this is rough. So, I mean, we have three exile effects, which is great. But what's going to happen if we go for it is, let's say we had Johnny minus the Scarab God. They get back Shalai in response. Everything we have is sorcery speed. So that's going to fizzle our activation. We then get to kill Shalai, kill Scarab God. I feel like that works out okay for us. So I'm going to use the Johnny minus on the Scarab God because it's going to get fizzled. And this one would gain our opponent some life if it resolved. So yeah, there's the Shalai. So that fizzles. But now we get to... Let me think about this. Now we get to Angel of Sanctions on the Shalai using Angel, not the Thopter Arrest, because if they have a removal spell for the Angel, I don't want them to get... Uh, I don't want them to get back their Scarab Guard. So they probably sacrifice here to gain life or they just hold up another activation. Yep. And now we get to see if our Thopter Rest resolves. If this resolves, we get to clear Scarab Guard. Oh no. They get Thrashing Brontodon. Oh man, this game is close. This game is so, so, so close. So they get the Brontodon here, which is really bad for us because we're in the awkward spot of either we can chump the Brontodon with the Angel, then let it blow up our Thopter Rest and get back Scarab Guard. Then they get to get control of our own angel so that doesn't work we basically have to let it kill our ajani confiscation coup oh no oh no oh this is an absolute disaster for us now they get to sacrifice the angel kill the thopter arrest get back the scarab god but hello 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 does that change anything oh, i'll go to nine in that scenario all right there's light for us so I'm pretty sure if we attack with everything, they're forced to sacrifice Angel, but then we don't have enough mana. Oh, this is rough. All right, so we attack with two guys. Then if we Blossoming Defense, we still don't have enough. All right, I don't think we can get there. I don't think we can do it. I'm gonna make this attack. These guys can't produce mana anyway. The attack's okay. Hopefully they just go for their Scarab God here. Oh, they do. Oh, this is huge. Because now our cast out gets to do some work. Five. So we go after their Scarab God. They get to sacrifice it. Oh, this is so rough. This is so rough. Man, oh man. Combination of Temple of that and Scarab God is just so good. Yeah, and they smartly do not block. All right, they get the Scarab God back. And they get to cast the Scarab God again. And now in the horrible situation of them getting to uh, sacrifice our angel again. Mm, that's another good draw. Jeez, this game. That's a seriously good draw. So the damage here doesn't matter. They're probably going to want to sacrifice our guy. We'll just ping the Scarab God. Doesn't matter. We're not going to attack. And now we get to crew our Sky Sovereign in response to them trying to exile with Angel if that's what they go for. Oh no, it's an essence extraction. Oh no. Oh no. Been thwarted again. Oh, this has been such a crazy, crazy game to finish off the league. I think that the Scarab God is going to best us despite all these exile effects because of that temple. Oh, even the Sky Sovereign to race with. Man, because now I just can't blossoming defense anymore. All right, opponent's getting in with the guard. Hmm? They let us untap. Why'd they do that? Okay, so there's no point in putting the Oasis on the Sky Sovereign because they can just block. So I'm just going to cycle away my scattered groves, find a forest. And I think I'm attacking. I mean, if I don't attack, I'm not achieving anything is the problem. I'm just getting hit down by this Scarab guard. And they get to start reanimating two things a turn. Uh-oh. But yeah. Yeah, I didn't really think this through, because they can now get this back. Hopefully they get this back on my turn, or this is still a creature. Vrask is Contempt. Oh no. Oh no. So I think we're Blossoming Defensing here, just because I'd rather the Sky Sovereign be exiled under an Angel of Sanction, so at least we get it back if we could get a removal spell. Yeah, so this is what we expected. This means we're taking 10 damage next turn, and we then have one turn to draw removal spell to get it back. 
But yeah, we tried. We tried. We came close. We came so very, very close to the 5-0. It's not over yet, but it's pretty over. All right, conservative attack from the opponent. We go down to 10. Come on, big draw. Ballista. One, two, three. We can play it for three. Three is not four. I mean, I'm gonna play it. Oh, that's Torrential Gear Hulk. Well, it was fun while it lasted. It was fun while it lasted. We came close. We came also very close. <sighs> Next time. Next time we'll get there. Next time we'll get there. All right, opponent's just getting back the servant. They're gonna drain us for a bunch. We're not dead this turn. We're just dead next turn. Unless they have a removal spell. They do. All right, so we're dead this turn. We tried, we tried, we tried hard. We tried very hard. And we didn't get a game two, but there's the 4-1. Decent result. I mean, it's a good result. It's a good result. It's just a bit disappointing after how close we got. And that is green-white mid-range. Alrighty, so closing thoughts on green-white mid-range. You'll notice that, but for the weird Sultai ramp deck that stumbled, all of our games were two ones. They were all pretty close matches. Uh, and this deck does play a lot of sweet cards. We got to see Sky Sovereign in action. We got to see Sh some Shalai, um, Jani, Lai. I mean, I mean, they all had their moments to shine. Uh, I think that over the long term, Shalai ends up being the best card in the deck, especially when paired with Blossoming Defense and when curving out into other angels. But yeah, if you like playing sweet cards and having a really good shot, I think, against pretty much every deck in the format. Like, I'm not saying you're going to be favored against every deck in the format, but I think you're going to have some very even matches against most decks in the format with this deck. And it's, it's just a lot of fun to play. So that is it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this bit of standard content, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.